Well, I grew up on a farm, and Miriam grew up in a farming kind of family or area. So we had it, you know, from the beginning, uh, some interest in farming. Um, but we uh, moved to this farm. Uh, we didn't farm for many years. I had other work, professional work that I did. But we bought the farm 30 years ago, so we moved here in 1987, and uh, not with the intent, though, of it becoming a, a commercial operation. We wanted just to have a place to enjoy and uh, homestead, raise our own food, uh, raise our family here. But within a couple of years, you know, we began to have some extra produce and uh, friends that were interested in getting some of our extra produce. So we started uh, uh, just kind of selling what we had. And around that time, 1991, we, um, we learned about the, uh, the CSA model. Uh, uh, from various places. One of them was actually at a uh, Virginia Association for Biological Farming conference where Elliot Coleman had uh, come down. Not but, but, uh, No, it was, he came later. It was, uh, it was some other folks that came down from, uh, from Washington that were doing something like that. Anyhow, we learned about the CSA model. Uh, it kind of was interesting to us. So we started really with that kind of idea in 1991 to grow for um, a, a limited number of households. I think we had, what, maybe 20 or 25 in the first uh, few years, which was uh, all we could manage and all we sort of had the skills and the knowledge to do at that time. We both had full-time jobs off the farm, <clears throat> so that was really all we could do, and four children. We had uh, a, a lot of young kids here. So. <laughs> Well, our biggest market is our CSA, and which we've kept now. This is our 27th year for the CSA, and uh, we have over 190 members this year for our spring-summer share. Um, we also do a fall share with that, and, uh, and in the last couple of years, we've been able to also offer a limited winter share as well with our high tunnels that we have now. So that takes about three-fourths of our product uh, that goes to the CSA. And then the other markets that we've been developing are um, uh, several produce stores, uh, some smaller um, um, organic natural food stores that, that, that uh, specialize in selling local products. <clears throat> and we have a couple of restaurants uh, that we sell to as well. We, uh, that's been our major market. We've dabbled a little bit in farmer's markets in the past, but we found that uh, that didn't really fit our life interest and schedule so much that we had enough, you know, through the CSA <laughs> and through the other markets that we had not to kind of get into the farmer's markets. Uh, we've also been dabbling a bit with our farm stand here on the farm. Uh, we did some of that last year um, and uh, we're still considering that because uh, we have we'd like to have access to provide access to folks that live around here that uh, may just want to get you know some of this and that and not participate in the CSA we do have quite a few local people though now in the CSA we've been really uh, struck how over the years um, we've uh, been able to get um, as subscribers uh, to our CSA uh, a lot of folks that live up in this more rural area of the Middle Peninsula. Uh, in the early years, we were pretty dependent on Williamsburg folks, and we still do have a lot of subscribers in Williamsburg. But, uh, but the CSA model uh, has really become known to, uh, to a much broader uh, reach of people, and uh, even folks that you know, live up in rural areas. So. I don't know exactly what the number is. <laughs> uh, a lot. A lot. We, go, we go a wide a variety. variety. Yeah, a wide variety of vegetables. Uh, most of the popular vegetables, um, and um, we, and then within the particular uh, crop of vegetable, we grow lots of varieties within that. So, for example, with tomatoes, which we enjoy growing a lot of different varieties, we probably have about 15 different varieties of tomatoes that we're growing this year. Uh, a few standards and then some other kind of specialty kind of things. Uh, we also grow uh, quite a few herbs. We like to do basil, uh, the sweet basil, Thai basil, purple basil. We sort of focus on those three kinds largely. Uh, parsley, uh, we're, we're doing quite a bit with that. Um, uh, dill, 
Uh, this year we're growing fennel for the first time, and, and um, so we do some of that. We uh, do some flowers, but the flowers are mostly for uh, beneficial functions here on the farm. We used to grow um, more flowers for cut flowers to make bouquets for our CSA, but now my son Paul and his wife Jenny have their flower farm, Winhaven Farm, uh, near us, and so they're kind of in the flower growing business, and we just buy in flowers from them for our uh, CSA shares. Well, and most of what we grow, the CSA does get mm -hmm. a portion of. There are a few things, maybe, would you say that we grow for mm -hmm. um, the whole the uh, wholesale vendors, but mm -hmm. but, but mm -hmm. the CSA, we kind of feel like the CSA is the center of the is, of the yeah. wheel, <laughs> yeah. and that we owe it to our, <clears throat> our CSA members, you know, to 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 offer them, you know quality and, and a yeah. variety and then there are certain crops that that others may request that we grow or that we just do better mm -hmm. uh, in a more um, mm -hmm. wholesale kind of, kind of operation. Mm -hmm. Well we really got very involved in VABF when we first got uh, moved to the farm. Uh, at that point, the, it was a pretty small organization relative mm -hmm. to what it is now. It was smaller. 90s, early, early 90s. There, there at that time were a lot of field trips being organized to different farms. That was, the, that was kind of their focus at that point. Um, and so we just went on every field trip we could. I remember mm -hmm. having, you know, Katie and Paul, little toddlers, and we would <laughs> we'd be holding one, the other one, and we would just be going around different farms and learning, learning that way. And that was really helpful. Uh, of course, Charlie, growing up on a farm, there's something about having this innate sense and knowledge mm -hmm. when you grow up on a farm and you're active in the growing of things. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's like growing up in a family. You mm -hmm. don't forget it. And so that was mm -hmm. certainly, certainly mm -hmm. helpful, but mm -hmm. VSU has been really supportive uh, mm -hmm. over the years. We've done a, a ton of things when Andy Hankins was, mm -hmm. was alive and working there at VSU um, and continuing to the present. Um, mm -hmm. Really, really, um, that's been a major source mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, and Southern SOG, um, yeah, so that's a regional mm -hmm. organization that Charlie mm -hmm. was involved in and I attended it at several times. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to really appreciate and feel grateful for mm -hmm. what you do and what mm -hmm. you have because you know when we're growing things we look out and we see we see the beautiful tomatoes but we also see the weeds <laughs> mm -hmm. we see the work that needs to be done so most of us go into this work because we love it we like being close to nature at the same time we have to just remember that we need to keep that that enjoyment alive and at the same time that we're feeling our due responsibility to take care of it, you know, so. Mm -hmm. uh, Very challenging, okay, challenging as well. Well, um, yeah, keeping uh, the farming so that it, um, um, so that you can maintain some balance in your life. I mean, for us, the farming is a way of life. Um, it, uh, it, it, we, we do it because we, um, we, we, we enjoy the work. And so it's a challenge not to take on too much so that uh, it becomes overly stressful. It's going to be stressful sometimes, if that's okay to some degree, but you don't, we, you know, it's a challenge at times for it, it becomes overly stressful. And, um, and so uh, you have to spend some time figuring out where that's coming from and what's causing that and, uh, and make some changes so that you can, can reduce that. Um, the, um, uh, the, the, I think uh, you know, as <coughs> farming revolves around the weather, um, uh, of course, we all know that, um, and you have to um, um, you know, uh, plan for the unexpected. Um, and I think that what we've done uh, pretty well, I think, through the years is to, 
to emphasize in our production a lot of diversity so that um, when the unexpected happens weather-wise, and it will happen each year, um, we have some backup you know, in place usually because we have a diverse kind of array of crops to do. So that's, that's what we do to kind of help ourselves be sure that we've got something growing that we can, that we can sell. What that brings with it though is a lot. When you have a lot of diverse operation, you have a lot to manage. One thing that pops into my brain first is, is, is start slow, <laughs> be deliberate, start small, mm -hmm. um, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, certainly be efficient and, and business minded, but try to be balanced uh, with uh, also doing something you really enjoy mm -hmm. uh, at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, discover and discover in that what you really enjoy doing and, um, um, and, and, and follow that, you know, match your marketing and match your production to what you really enjoy doing, I think, in the beginning. Um, and charge enough for your produce. Charge enough for your produce, you know. <laughs> don't, but, don't undercut yourself as yeah, far as if, pricing. If you're going into it to make some living at it, and I would encourage you in the beginning to, uh, unless, unless, you know, you, you're bringing a lot of uh, skills with you to start out with, that you, that you try not to overtax it you're trying to get much profit from it in the early days, but use, but take some time to learn the craft, learn the trade, learn the work, and um, aim to make some money at it. But don't don't set your goal too high. I think in the early days, but definitely, if you want to make this a part of your living from the beginning, you know, develop good business skills. Um, have um, uh, if you don't have that learn it, you know, because it, it, the farming to be profitable, um, there is certainly a degree of business to it, and so you need to have that. This is the, um, this is amazing, amazing work, um, and it's a way of life. It's not just work, it's not a job, it's just a way of life. Yeah, absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>